Titi Hanana. Shaitan is back, aye. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what's wrong with you? My ocean. She ran into my ocean. Quite frankly, my ocean. What's up guys? Hello, hello. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, I'm Raisa and this is Emmanuel Sanai. And we are subscribe. Finally... No, it's only tell them at the end. Sorry. <laughs> so we do got QA, we ask some people to ask us questions because you almost pass. No pass. I wanna know things. So But we also really love answering the questions. We love answering the questions, so we're gonna answer a few of your questions. First question uh, When do you guys wanna start a family? In our last time. Yeah. Stop it! But when do you wanna start? On your own? Um, I don't have any timing. Honestly, like, um, I, I can say I'm ready now, but. I feel like I feel like I'm I, look I wanna be a father. That's one thing for sure. I think I've said that like from the beginning of a relationship. Yeah? I wanna be a father. Um am I ready to be a father right now? Uh, I don't believe so because I feel like um I'm not um where I would like to be or where I I I I I I, I, how do I say this? I'm not where I'd like to be currently. So I just wanna bring my child or children in an environment where I can be like, okay, things are like sorted now, you know what I mean? And uh, I know a lot of people are like, don't worry, the parakat and blessings will come once the child is there and stuff, but I'd rather play it safe. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely want kids. Uh, but if I had to plan like, right, when? Not, not anytime soon. What, am I having children by myself? <laughs> I say it in all those times. I personally oh. am, if it comes now, it comes. Like, um, I won't. Yeah, um, there's nothing you can do. It's not like you can be like, yeah, ah, but I won't, I won't be like you. It would just mean like, we would have to work harder. And um, mm. I don't think that you'll ever be ready. Just never. like with marriage, like you never are ready. But there obviously is things that you can put in place. But um, I do know that I want to have it. Child before she just wants a mixed race child. No. Or she just wants a child because she wants to see what it's going to look like. No, obviously not. Don't say that. I do know that I want a child before thirty because I kind of want to also grow with my child. Yeah, but but you know that. Come on. Yeah, I know that. But what does it say about me? What I can't grow with my child because I'm old. <laughs> okay, we're taking long with this one question. No, but you mustn't say things that. Offensive to me. Oh. How is that offensive? It's offensive. You want to grow old with your child, Mina? <laughs> no. You already passed the T. What's your mark? What's your mark? Foot. <laughs> <laughs> um. Another question. How has fasting experience been so far since you've uh, fully converted? I guess that's for me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's been the most amazing experience after my wedding. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no, really, no. No, because the Nika was like a big deal for me. Yeah, but you I can't just... compare the two. No, I can't compare. I'm saying after. I'm actually saying how I'm feeling. So, um, that amazing feeling that I felt during Ramadan, the only time I've ever felt like that was at our wedding. But it obviously means way more than that because it's like, yeah, it's 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 it was like a spiritual cleansing for me, man. It was it was the most amazing thing, honestly, that I've really participated in. Look, I have fasted before um, uh, when I was Christian, but it would be like for one or two days. The most I've ever fasted was like for five days, and during that time, I at least drank water or just eat fruit. This time it was like, bah, cold turkey, baba. 
and um, 30 days yeah but I ah but it was amazing out of the 30 days I think it was like four or five days that I was really struggling but uh, I, you, I, it's, I, I love it like honestly it's the last day today but I feel like I want to do it for six more days I, okay. I genuinely genuinely feel like that because I said the, the extra okay. six days is most yeah that one yeah Anyway, next question. Ah, you don't rush. <laughs> Why must we rush when they you ask me a question? You always rush me, don't no, you? No, because no people want to know about my situation, and I'm letting them know. So next you time, see, I, it's last day. You leave me to Can answer. you see what happens? It's the last day of Ramadan. Shaitan wants to creep in. <laughs> it, he wants to creep in already. It's one more day, Shaitan. Please, wah. Um. You you mustn't learn new words, you. <laughs> Hey, oh, uh, do you want to read this question? Is Emmanuel fasting? Yes, he is. Which influences? She called you a witch. Can you believe I it? I never. You just said it now. I'm reading the next How question. How can you call our subscribers a witch? I'm reading the next question. And that's the one person that subscribed. You're calling them a witch. I never called you a witch. I said witch. <laughs> Ex yeah, no, you said witch. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that is a not um, Ramadan inspired, but this person asks which influences do you draw inspiration from? Uh, Yo, that's mostly, a good question. Um, overseas um, influences, I look at their stuff because they're obviously advanced. Um, and everything that comes up on YouTube is like always overseas. Um, yeah, so there's a few. Um, I don't draw inspiration from them. I don't. I don't. You get ideas. Not, not even. Look, the people that I draw inspiration from are like your people who are your DJ Smooths, like philanthropists, and your Busi Tembewayos, like um, those type of people. I draw inspiration from, and I don't regard them as influences from the social media aspect because I think people when they say influence they mean like I don't want to mention names <laughs> no like they more of like celebrities celebrities yes I draw inspiration from celebrities like that have babies please please ah, yeah. <laughs> don't say please as if I'm denying you <laughs> I really you. want a baby but you know what's that? you have to do things in order to get babies okay Next oh oh we must change now <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Um, how was Ramadan as a married couple? It was perfect. I must say, this morning I was really sad, really sad, um, because like just at home you've created like these traditions mm. that I do miss, and I know tomorrow morning like I will miss it, um, like. Um, us, like my sister, and me and my mommy, like we would be getting done while my daddy and my brother goes to mosque and you know that rush that you must get done before the men come from mosque and everything must be set on the table like that I'll miss but I have to create that in my own home so I was thinking of like going to my mommy and being there from like 6am in the morning but it didn't make sense because I have to start that in my own in my own home but i know that i'll be very sad um tomorrow but the first time first ramadan married was very like a, it was nice too so you said all of the just to say to answer the question which was i was yeah, ramadan that is you, a married that couple you've been doing no but i'm answering it because ramadan married was okay like i didn't have a sense of sadness in ramadan being away from home mm. Like, I felt really secure, it felt like we've been doing this for years. Yeah, it was obviously my first time like preparing iftar for my family. I was just impressed that the fact that you cooked every day and you, you would wake up knowing that, hey, I have to prepare something. Where before that, this day that you're like, oh, then I'm like, oh, what's this now? Which one is this one? <laughs> but during Ramadan, you were like, you were open, you were like, all right. Yeah, she even wants a new oven, she wants a new microwave and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you see. 
the mochi mode is kicking in now. So that amongst other stuff, uh, waking up obviously to make salah, that was nice. I really like that. And funny enough, <laughs> um, I was struggling with my Al-Fatiha for almost eight months. And then all of a sudden during Ramadan, I mastered the Al-Fatiha. No? I was like, yeah, with two surahs also, brother. But I think because like your mindset is in yeah mode. yeah i like, was i was in spiritual mode yeah, like on Ramadan. other days we're always thinking about other stuff like it's really fast we have a very fast paced mm -hmm. life which is so bad because we actually should take time but yeah 10 out of 10. Shlat is now brother kun faya kun who do you recommend kun faya kun um yung buf yung and kum yung Next question, don't, don't make a mockery. Of what? I'm saying you come you. How is that a mockery? Damn, we must have babies. No, we already had that one. Do you guys still receive hate mail, comments, fail kicker, etc? Um, we probably do, but we just block it out now. We don't get hate mail anymore. We don't get... We do. I do. No. I do. Not like before though. Yeah, I I get hate mail for, just for me now. Like it's no more like for us. Yeah, I still get like if I'm a Swiss traffic stop, you know, someone attacked me. Oh, haram police. Yeah, but never like before. I think <clears throat> people don't really so. The reason why I think is because if anybody had to comment something or do something, look, we are known for exposing these people. Like yeah. we put it on our platforms that. Hamil said this about us now, and then everybody who loves us attacks Hamil, and Hamil sees his meal right then and there. That might probably even be his last meal. Bars. <laughs> Hamil, don't Ew, play with me. Bars are jokes. Me. Okay, is that all? No. And uh, what else did I want to say? The fail kicker that will never end. That will never stop. Yeah, but generally, you don't even have to be an international couple to get a fail cake. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a fail cake. That's how it's I kick fail. fail. Cake. Okay, no, then we don't get that then. Yeah. Me, if I kick fail, you'll know, brother. <laughs> <Cake> fail. Yeah, I'm mean, here show you, brother. I won't, Plus, I won't. how nice is he looking in his face, man? Martial law. <laughs> if martial law was a person, hey, we're I'm just gonna go bake a pie now. The filling is humble. Bake. It's fine. I will still eat it, martial law. Okay, next one. Uh, yeah, um, fail kicker now. Uh, what else? Emmanuel didn't screenshot all the questions. Look, look, just look. look. What is this? What is this? Every relationship gets boring. Sometimes love isn't a feeling, it's a commitment. It's to love every day, physically and emotionally. It's not always love, smiles and fun. It can get tough. People tend to quit when it stops being fun. Read the caption for one minute. Why did you... That's for you! We screenshot this. It's Why did you... Because I wanted to send it to you. It's... Give my phone. Because you are now. Now, why do you want to read like this now? You and Hamil must go in the freeze there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got one. Ooh. I've got one. <laughs> nah, you had one job, bro. You had one job. You had one job. For what? To screenshot all the questions. <laughs> I did. What do you mean? That was all the questions. Oh. This is this this one DM that I would like for us to discuss though quickly. Somebody sent me a DM. Um, the reason why I want to discuss this is because I feel like a lot of people um, make the mistake of thinking that I I I chose Islam or the Deen because of you. You understand? Mm -hmm. And um, I'll I'll let you know now what this person said amongst many other people. Who keep like sending now. me uh, messages like this. So the message reads Hi, how's it? This is from Anonza. Anonza! <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Tell them who's Anonza. 
Anonymous. Anonza. She became black this morning. So the message reads as follows. Um, hi, how's it? I hope you have time to answer this. Um, I watched some of your YouTube channel uh, videos. Uh, they are amazing. Shukran. Uh, but I needed to ask something. I noticed your name is Emmanuel. So I'm assuming your parents are Christian. And I know you converted to Islam. My girlfriend's Muslim. So I've been thinking about what that would be like. I was wondering how your family took it and how you practice. If you feel like it's uh, in conflict of your original beliefs or you actually believe that Islam is one of the true religion and Christianity is false, or you just have your own beliefs based on general uh, morality. The questions I could ask are endless, but I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to ask. I hope you have time to reply to this. Thanks. Um, this, 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 there's so much that I can say to that message. Um, firstly, Islam does not teach us that any other religion is wrong. That's number one that stood out for me. Um, secondly, um, you asking me, you, you said one thing that stands out for me that your girlfriend is Muslim and also asking me, how did the family take it? That firstly says to me that you want to or you are considering becoming Muslim for all the wrong reasons. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Because if your concern is what other people are going to think and what your family is going to think, then you're not doing it for the right reasons, my brother. Because in my case, you know, God has put me on this path that... I had to do research for myself and look at things for myself and, you know, ask myself, is this going to make me a better person? Is this going to make me a better human being? And all of the questions was yes, you know, so if I had to choose to become a better human being, but stay the person that I was just because of what my family was going to think, it's an easy choice for somebody like me, you know what I mean? And my wife was purely but the vessel that is it god placed her in my path for me to see something or to go and do research on my own i did not convert because of her no she was one of the reasons yes but she was not the reason um what else did you say in the message that you can add to i think um can i answer can I say yes, something? that's what I'm saying. Um, like, I do understand, like, your answer, but at the same time, um, I think that it does get difficult when you think of what, what, like, your family would say or whatever. Like, it's not that that thought has never crossed your mind. Like, th like of course. Yeah. Um, it's normal to think that, but that is where you have to really be honest with yourself that's um, what i meant yeah so it's normal to think like what is this one going to say what is that one going to say mm. especially with the society that we live in today um i think about that to this day even after being a muslim for a full year i think about it still to this day yeah and there's something like i also get lots of messages from my side like how did we make it work with emmanuel being um another religion and how did we get married with him being christian and that's i think people that hasn't really followed our story mm. and for us it's hard to answer that question because it's always been easy like in terms of how we handle the situation i'm not now talking about like um the outside people and what we thought but the respect that you and i had for each other number one like you coming from christianity and mm. me being muslim you i never needed to tell you that you need to respect my religion mm. and um come see what my religion is about i've never needed to tell you that mm. um and you never needed to tell me to um to like not force you mm. um so in that way it's been easy and um emmanuel is a person that does a lot of research generally so i believe that even before me 
he was inquisitive about different things and different religions. Um, his cousin once said a very powerful thing that I always keep, that I always remember that lives like rent free in my head. That Emmanuel always knew about Islam and Christianity because he's grown up with people that was Muslim and he's grown up with people that was Christian and he just needed to make a choice. Mm. That's literally what he died to say. Like, he just needed to make a choice. So, for us to give advice to someone that really is like new to this and being thrown in the deep end, it's kind of hard because we never experienced that. We experienced the what would people say, mm. the looks and that, but generally I feel like we had it easy and I feel like Allah placed that in him. It's called Hidayah. Mm. It was placed in him a long time ago and um, when the two of us got together, it wasn't a coincidence. Like nothing is a coincidence. Nothing. Even um, you meeting your Muslim girlfriend, it's not yeah, a coincidence. And really it's it's what you make of it, mm. it's what you decide and um, my father said to me that I need to sit back in this whole situation and watch him do what he needs to do because that way um, I can see how much he wants this for himself. Mm. So I said nothing, you can vouch for this. There were times where I would be like, um, is this going to happen? But mainly because I wanted to get married and I wanted to be a wife and that was always my dream and that's why I would always talk to you about it if I mm. did talk to you about it. Um, but yeah, I think um, you had a very you had a very peaceful journey to making the decision compared to lots of other people. It's because the will was there. Yeah. Not the will to convert to Islam. No, the will to, to learn. learn. Once you do that, I promise you things become so easy. My brother, let me put it to you this way, um, to give you more perspective of my journey. The more I learn about Islam, the more I realize that I'm actually changing nothing about Emmanuel. Mm-hmm. You know, my uh, in Islam we call it what? Ikhlaq. 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 Hey! See, I know these things now. But what are you referring to? Because Ikhlaq is Your like, character. Yeah. You know, like, my, my character is still intact. I've just polished it up in terms of um, doing better. I can go home now anytime. My family will always still recognize the same Emmanuel that they've known all their lives. I'm just making more smarter decisions, better decisions. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a better human being. I cater for others more than I cater for myself now. I think of those things, you know, and it's because I'm doing it um, through Allah, you know. I am able to go in my musla and pray five times a day, whereby before I only prayed once and thanking God for getting me through the day. Now I'm thanking Him for every single thing, for the very breath that is flowing in and out of my lungs and right now. It resonates with you. It resonates with me, yes. You know, and I'm able to think of somebody who, who is less, less fortunate. So anybody in my eyes who will have something negative to say against such a beautiful thing a thing of you becoming a better human being that is a clear indication that that person needs belongs in a certain category in your life and even so it is your duty to make them aware of Allah's work of Allah's beautiful work mm-hmm. think about it this way think of any prophet in the Bible or Quran which are basically the same if you also didn't know it's another thing that I figured out later in life um, when I converted to Islam that the very same people that are in the Bible are in the Quran. A lot of people don't know that. Any and every prophet that you can think of went through far worse than what you are afraid of. Being that um, my mom or my friends are going to say this. Think about what they went through back in the day when they tried to preach the work of Allah. You know, they were denounced, they were, they were stoned. They were they were they were called crazy they, were, they went through they, they, like most of their lives be, all because of wanting to make awareness of the almighty so if your fear is what people what people are going to say compared to what they went through peace be upon them then yeah man oh. 
Look, we not here to try and convert anybody. Mm. Um, Emmanuel's journey is a beautiful one, and if anybody draws inspiration from that and wants to seek knowledge, mm. then Alhamdulillah, um, that is what it is. Mm. However, um, if we speak about Islam or what we go through or what we notice from Islam, it doesn't mean that um, we're saying that what you believe in is wrong. And that's, that's one enough. of the things that he said in the message that yeah. oh, I now believe that Christianity is the wrong. Yeah. Nowhere does it say that in yeah. the Quran, in Islam, nowhere. If if you heard somebody say that, it, they are totally wrong. Yeah. They are totally wrong. Like, um, if we go to his family now, um, we will participate in what's happening there. Obviously, yeah. um, this to a certain extent, like we won't like. Mm. Be but if my granny has to pray, we all hold hands. Yeah. We pray. And we pray and we respect it. And, yes. Um, sometimes, like Emmanuel, will even maybe like teach them a lesson from Islam, mm. and it creates like this beautiful conversation. Because oh, you I didn't that. know that. Or yeah, that. and it, that's like that's it. Like we don't believe that another re- the religion is wrong. Um, it's because people focus a lot on the differences instead of the similarities. And if people can see the similarities, they'll dig deeper and do more research. I think not even that. I think people focus on what must be right and what must be wrong too often that you miss the intention of it. That's what I'm saying. Those are the differences because you want to focus on what's right and wrong. Yeah, like no, like even if they believe something different, like differently, um, that's fine to converse in the differences because obviously there are some differences, but mm. people go into religious talks and controversy talks with this negative mindset that they want to get their point across that that is and, what you must and believe. And also it comes from a place of being ill-informed. That's where most arguments come in. I'll make a simple example. Like um, the Ahmad Dida who passed away in the early 90s. This was a, a Muslim uncle who knew the Bible in and out, who knew the Quran in and out. And if you had to watch his videos, he doesn't attack Christian people. He doesn't attack the atheists and all of that. He's there to answer. In fact, he's the one being attacked because he knows so much. So that is not somebody who can who you can say is is denouncing the uh, uh, religion or anything like that. It's just. People are ill-informed, hence why they can debate um, to a point where it just you can see it's blatant ignorance. But um, yes. Um, in conclusion. In conclusion, uh, to the well, brother. Let me give the conclusion because I said in con- in conclusion. <laughs> in conclusion. <Strive>. In conclusion. <laughs> That's um, a joke. Like you can ask Emmanuel many questions. At the end of the day, it's very easy your journey, That's and it. what he feels about Islam, you might not feel about Islam, mm-hmm. and um, you can't um, make your journey according to his journey because hundred percent it won't be the same. And that goes for every other person who always sends me messages. Don't get me wrong; I I don't reject your. Your, your questions, I just don't answer them because of what we are answering mm-hmm. to you right now. It's it's not my journey that you should be following. My journey is not the right one. No, it was my path. It was my journey. You have your own. Yeah. You can just draw inspiration from my journey, but not. you can't follow what I believe and how I believe it. So, yes, what you were still saying. Yeah, that's what I want. I just wanted to say like, um, we don't need to be sitting here and saying um, this is not what we're doing, this is uh, um, this is negative, whatever. All we can say is that your journey is your journey and if there's one thing that stood out from this entire journey that even I took away is to do proper research always and figure out why you're doing it. When I first met Emmanuel, um, him and someone else in the galley of the aircraft, they were talking about um, how like they feel Islam is extreme like um, I don't know what mm-hmm. it was and I still told you when you figure out why you're doing it it won't be extreme yeah I yeah. forgot about it now I remember because I the reason why I remember I, I, I always used to think that 
and yeah. it's you, you you restricted it's too much rules and stuff and when you learn about it you realize the beauty but when you learn about it from the proper mm. um, you see me feeling that source. way and saying that way came from a place of ignorance yeah. i was ill-informed i didn't know therefore i could say such you know yeah toxic things anyway guys you know that's I actually think, a good um, example that you made now i think that's it from us um mm. if you are watching this tonight we'd like to wish you a beautiful Eid Mubarak and may all your rewards and everything that you've done in this Amen. Amen. I didn't even finish my I'm dua saying, yet. Yeah, but isn't you normally they say Amin Amin. Amin Amin. Amin Amin. But what's the difference? I no, didn't finish the, didn't know. I didn't finish the But they say Amin while you do the the the, the, the to Amos, isn't it? You don't say I mean just at the end of the sentence. Yeah, no, that is like um, when they're making um, salah and they, um, I know what you're talking about, but in Arabic they are finishing the dua, but you just don't hear it because you don't. Know. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought you must say I mean, I mean. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I so mean. I didn't finish I mean. it yet. Okay, but so I, I must wait till you say full stop, then I say I mean. Yeah, so I wanted to say may you all reap the rewards of the month that has just passed. Okay, now I can say it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, yeah, Ibu Barak, have a blessed day. Ibu Barak, guys, enjoy. Us to you. We love you. Actually, we never say this to our subscribers. We do love you, actually. Yeah. Even though you just subscribe to be best, some of you. But we still love you. <laughs> you contribute to keep the lights on. Anyway, I'm going to go make Shukar. a free start now. Jazakallah. We must say Jazakallah now. We have, we have followers in Jovik as well. So. Jazakallah, shukran guys, we appreciate it. Enjoy your eat with your families. Um, yeah, man. R and I. Halal, yeah. Bye. This city, halal. Shaitan is back, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what's wrong with you? <laughs>